Good morning, church. Welcome to the worship of the resurrected Jesus Christ with Union Congregational United Church of Christ. We're glad you are with us. Thanks to those of you who helped out yesterday with our Stock the Box Drive. It's amazing how a small project can become an ongoing ministry. Thanks again to all who have made this happen for our neighborhood and for our church. The Brain Center of Green Bay Board met on Thursday night, and I'm happy to say that this startup has begun to make a real impact in our community and in the lives of families and individuals struggling with neurodegenerative diseases. Check the Brain Center out at braincentergb.org. Don't forget our virtual May coffee hour coming up right after this service. If you miss your church family, this is a good time to reconnect and chat a little bit. There will be a link at the end of the service, and the link is also in this week at Union. Please join us. Adult education is continuing at 9 a.m. on Sundays. We heard today from H. James Smet uh, about the everyday lives of our Somali uh, sisters and brothers. And we've invited guests from the Privilege Institute to introduce us to their work for next Sunday. The link is in this week at Union. We are recruiting Sunday school and youth ministry teachers and aides for next fall for all age levels. Contact Education Ministry Chair Nancy Gibson at njgib at aol.com. Or you could contact me or Pastor Bridget. Thanks for considering contributing to the faith formation of our young people. Speaking of young people, did you know that our middle school youth have been doing a series of half-hour interviews on the history of Union with some of our long-standing members? Well, they have, and what we're discovering is fascinating. In fact, I wish I had done this three years ago. If you'd like to be interviewed, we have three more Wednesday evenings open. Please contact me. These interviews have been recorded and will go into the church archives. Finally, don't forget the special day of prayer service this coming uh, Thursday, 7 p.m. at Grace Lutheran Church, 321 South Madison Street in Green Bay. This outdoor socially distanced gathering will highlight the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and feature a reflection by Union Zone Michael Vinson. You won't want to miss it. Please bring a lawn chair or you can stay in your car and listen to the service on FM radio. Please join me now in our collective covenant, the bond of union. Giving our all as we have been given all, we accept the religion of love and service which Jesus lived and taught, and we declare it our purpose to strive to do the will of God and to make the Christ spirit dominant in our lives and in all human relations. Please join me in our opening prayers as printed in the bulletin. We gather in the presence of our God, where grieving people and children with skin knees have their tears wiped away. We gather as the beloved children of God to worship the one who provides what we need if not always what we want. We gather around the table of God to taste the goodness of God, to drink deeply from God's mercy, and to incorporate God's ways into our very being. We continue in prayer. Lead us, architect of creation, into all those places where we will discover your hope waiting to nourish and restore our famished souls. Lead us, God of wounds and flesh, into all those places where we may have the joy of filling the emptiness of others with your goodness. Lead us, spirit of goodness, into all those places where deeds of kindness and hands overflowing with mercy Speak louder than platitudes. God in community, holy and one, lead us into life in your kingdom as we gather in your name to be renewed by you. Amen. 
And since it's still Easter season for two more weeks, we trust in God's grace and mercy, confident in the gift of forgiveness, as we omit the confession and assurance of pardon. We therefore can both give and receive the deep peace that Christ provides. Let us greet one another with a sign of that peace. May the peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Join us in singing, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. Our first reading is taken from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias! He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. 
But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. Myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. It's that time in our service, especially for kids, and I'd invite them to join me uh, now in our centering prayer. Holy Spirit, bring us peace. Holy Spirit, bring us peace. Holy Spirit, bring us peace. I'm continuing our series uh, today on Easter signs. When we look, we can see signs of resurrection, of new life all around us. Last week I talked with you about the sunrise, and today I want to talk with you about plants, and especially about buds. Buds like these I have in my hand here are mentioned 27 times in the Bible. Probably the most famous of those 27 verses is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 61, 11. For as the earth 
bring, brings forth its shoots. And as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. Every bud is a sign, a little sign of Easter, a sign of new life. This is a bud from a maple tree in our backyard. See how the little leaves are there? They'll become much bigger uh, red uh, leaves as they grow up. This bud will become a leaf. And then that leaf will soak up carbon dioxide and turn it into oxygen so that everything that breathes can live. I mean, that's what this little thing can do. Attached to the tree, you see the bud right there? And the little leaves. And this is a bud from a plant that's called a lily of the valley. And I think next week they'll probably be flowering. And so I'll be able to show you what they look like when they flower. And I wish I could share with you next week what they smell like. Because when these blossom, and we have lots and lots of them on the uh, in flower beds around the side of our house, they have some of the best smell in the world, lilies of the valley. And these are buds from the pear tree in our backyard. And you see how they're the leaf, the leaves are already um, out. They, they came from buds too. But what you have on the end there is a, are going to be blossoms, pink blossoms, um, that could become pears. We hope they will, as a matter of fact. And uh, next week they should be out. The flowers should be out. And they're very pretty. I may be able to share some of those with you as well. All those buds are just like you. New life springing forth filled with potential. And God wants you to grow because God loves you. The book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible puts my point well. There is hope for a tree if it is cut down that it will sprout again and that its shoots will not cease. Though its root grows old in the earth and its stump dies in the ground, yet at the scent of water it will bud and put forth branches like a young plant. I hope you have a great week. See you next week with some more Easter signs. God be with you until then. Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to John. We'll be reading chapter 21, verses 1 through 17. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing, and they said, we'll go along with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. He said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. And so they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with some fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of that fish that you've just caught. And so Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. 
Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. So Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus replied, Tend my sheep. Then Jesus said, Yet a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said it to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. The Gospel, the good news of our God. Let us join our hearts and minds in prayer. Holy God, we ask that from the written word and the spoken word, we would find your words of transformation and healing and hope. Indeed, your words of flourishing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Throughout the pandemic, one of the highlights of our online worship has been the, the beautiful music that has been offered by our members and friends and staff. Nick Myers Olson was our first hymn leader, not only because he has a wonderful voice, but also because one of his moms was in the common ministry meeting when we decided that we needed to transition to online worship and that to do so we would need a strong voice since it would not be healthy for the choir to sing together. Since then, one of the strengths and joys of our online service has been the masterful way our music director, Song Kung Graham, has recruited musical worship leadership from amidst the congregation. We've been truly blessed with so many people offering their beautiful gifts in worship. In addition to the beautiful and wonderful musical offerings from people in our, our church community, we have on occasion invited musical guests from the wider Green Bay community, most recently Haley Steele. Haley's beautiful soprano voice was a treat to behold in worship in the, for the last two Sundays. And after the service, Haley wrote the, this lovely thank you note. She wrote, I want to express my sincere gratitude for hiring me to record some worship music for Union UCC. Being able to sing in such a beautiful space, in person with a wonderful collaborator in the service of worship after such a year has filled me with a depth of overwhelming gratitude. Thank you for connecting with me. Perhaps it goes without saying that we've all been living through such a collective trauma with the pandemic, but I earnestly didn't realize how desensitized I had become to functioning so much of the time in a vigilant sort of survival mode. It all kind of caught up with me when I reached my vehicle after our recording session, and I felt a kind of hope again that I had long forgotten about, a hope that in there being an other side to this pandemic. Along with revealing that Haley has a gift with words as beautiful as her voice, her thank you note 
intersected with a rich article about languishing that ran in the New York Times last week. In the article, Adam Grant suggests that languishing is the dominant emotional state right now. And then he lifts up some and antidotes to languishing. The idea is that if depression is one end of the mental health spectrum and flourishing is the other side, languishing is in the middle. Less intense than the utter grief that many of us experienced early in the pandemic, languishing is a sense of stagnation, of emptiness, of muddling. Grant even cites the, the Simpsons and the, the frequent meh feeling that many characters express. Our gospel passage today from the 21st chapter of the Gospel of John is the very end of that gospel. The time setting of this passage isn't really clear. It starts after this, referring to the previous passage about Jesus appearing to the disciples and Thomas after the resurrection, but it doesn't say how long after those experiences. Today, I'd like you to envision that this passage takes place a, a good amount of time after the resurrection, maybe several months, and that Peter and the disciples are no longer in the depth of their grief following the crucifixion, but that they're now languishing. They're not in the Valley of Depression, which Grant describes in the New York Times article as feeling despondent, drained, and worthless. But neither are they flourishing, which is defined as having a strong sense of meaning, mastery, and mattering to others. Again, a strong sense of meaning, mastery, and mattering to others. In some ways, both literally and figuratively, the disciples are, are back to where they were before li their life with Jesus began. The meaning that following Jesus had infused into their lives, the teaching and healing that Je um, and forgiving that they had done in his name had been leached out with the crucifixion and for Peter with his denial. They're literally back to fishing on the Sea of Tiberias. And they're not catching any fish, which tells us that they're not experiencing mastery of their trade. They're psycho-spiritually back as well, back where they started. They're languishing. They're meh. Friends, Psychologists recommend that one of the best strategies for managing emotions is to name them. And so one of the things that I first lift up to you is to name, to acknowledge the low-grade malaise that many of us are feeling. In our gospel, like the long haul toll that pandemic is taking on us emotionally and spiritually, the disciples are no longer in the depth of despair, no longer engaging in, with the, the trauma of Jesus' death. But they're also not flourishing. Rather than offering an elaborate theological treatise, Jesus, Jesus builds a bonfire on the beach and grills some breakfast for his friends. Bessel van der Kolk, a pioneer in the psychology of trauma, suggests that trauma is held not in our minds, but in our bodies. And therefore, even before talk therapy can be effective, physical actions 
and healing are critical. Before our minds can have the capacity to process and make sense of traumatic experiences, an abundantly healthy step is engaging in things like taking walk or or walks or or doing yoga or taking long showers or baths. I wonder if this is part of the divine wisdom as to why so many of the post-resurrection accounts in the Bible include touch, include walking, include eating. Long before a psychologist wrote a book about it, people have faith, have intuited the divine wisdom that in order to heal from trauma, we need first to take action to de-stress our bodies. Then, only after Jesus has engaged with Peter's physical, bodily stress and trauma, does he start to process with Peter verbally. He asks, Peter, do you love me? Three times. I wonder if this doesn't key into the dynamic that Jesus is asking Peter to go deep, not just answer the question on a surface level, but to really answer. The dynamic isn't here isn't, you know, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine. But rather, how are you? After we've named our feelings and have held space for healing of our physicality, the Times article on languishing suggests that focusing on a small goal can help to transcend languishing. Could this be what Jesus is recommending to Peter when he says, feed my lambs, and again, tend my sheep? Could part of the divine wisdom of this passage be that Jesus is giving Peter a small, concrete task to help him to feel a small sense of accomplishment and purpose? Remember, the definition of flourishing we're using here is a strong sense of meaning, mastery, and mattering to others. A definition that I would suggest is the epitome of what Jesus is talking about when earlier in the Gospel of John, he says that he came that we might have life and have it most abundantly. Jesus' purpose is to forge human flourishing. That flourishing is what Haley Steele was talking about in the thank you note that she wrote to the church for the opportunity to offer her gifts and worship. And flourishing is what so many of us have experienced a lack of amidst pandemic. Now, lest we imagine that flourishing is wholly in our hands, I remind you that resurrection is not something that we do. Jesus was raised from the dead. He didn't raise himself. Resurrection is God's work. What we need to do these days is simply to open ourselves, our minds, our hearts, just as the, the tomb was opened, and step out into the light, trusting that it is God who is raising us, that it is God who will raise us, into a new reality that we cannot even imagine at this point. Friends, if you are languishing, my prayer for you this week is that you will name and acknowledge your experience, that you will attend to your physicality, and that you will engage in small, meaningful goals that contribute to your flourishing. But most of all, I'll be praying that you will be open to the resurrection life that God is raising within you. 
may it be so. Alleluia and Amen. Please join us in singing, Christ rose up from the dead. It's that time in our service when we collect our offerings, and even though we continue to worship virtually, your generosity throughout this pandemic has been much appreciated. We're stronger together, and your gifts strengthen our community. Please pray with me. Spirit of the living God, inspire in us the new life that opens up possibilities. Help us to see initiative where others see a dead end. Help us to see hope where others see despair. Help us to practice kindness where others push hate. Help us to see your infinite generosity so that we may be generous too. Amen. The table of bread and wine is now to be made ready. Come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often, and you who have not been for a long time, if ever. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have fallen short. Come, all who seek to follow Christ's way, for it is Christ who offers to encounter us here. This table is for all who believe, who wish for a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ, 
and to share in the fellowship of God's resurrection people. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is right to give God thanks and praise. From the rubble of chaos, you shaped the glory of creation, having formed us in your image. Your spirit breathed peace into us. But all too often, we chose to hide ourselves behind the locked doors of sin and death. You sent prophets to witness about your healing and justice and to call us into your pathways of peace. But we refused to hear their cry, treating one another as expendable strangers rather than mutually beloved. When we would not respond to the calls back to right relationship that you made through the prophets, Jesus came to embody your love to put flesh on your ways, to pick open the locked doors of our hearts and come in to be with us forever. Holy are you, God of our ancestors, and blessed is Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega. In the early morning light on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus once again offered his friends healing and grace. He offered them sustenance and forgiveness, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, my very being, offered that you might have flourishing life. Later, when their meal was almost over, Jesus gave you, dear God, thanks and praise once more. And then he poured out a cup and passed it around the campfire, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it. This is the cup of the covenant, our sacred promise, that healing and mercy and compassion, and love, and hope are stronger and more resilient than all of the powers of death. Do this in memory of me. In a special way today, we lift up in prayer Christy and Jeff Zahn and their family as they mourn the death of Christy's mother, Helen Smith. We pray for Anne Rocco Wiest, Rod Wiest, and the entire Wiest family as they mourn the death of Rod's mother, Leanne. For Dottie Becker and her daughter, Elaine Moss, as Dorothy has moved to hospice at Elaine's home. For Joan Wood's daughter, Anne, and son-in-law, Don, as Don has received stem cells after two attempts at bone marrow transplant. For Wendy Christian and her family as Wendy recovers from a heart attack, for Mark Smith as he travels to attend to his ailing mother, for Jenna Stevens who is undergoing radiation treatment for a pituitary gland tumor, for Jason Pugh's brother Brian who is struggling with COVID-19, for Pat and Bruce Schaefer's nephew's wife, Leslie, who is undergoing treatment for breast cancer and who has two young children. We pray in gratitude with Tony Champeau and her husband, Brad, who's making a strong recovery after a series of small strokes last week. And we also pray for Tony's friend, Julie, who is struggling with complications after being treated for breast cancer. For John Shear, Rosalie Shear, who have moved to a deeper level of care at their assisted living facility. For all who struggle with depression and other mental health concerns, especially those who are contemplating or who have attempted suicide. And for their loved ones, for their caregivers. Holy God, we 
pray that they may seek and find the support and help that they need and that they may know God's presence is with them even in the most difficult of times. We pray for a family member of Nan and Kim Janusek who is recovering, receiving radiation treatment for cancer and for all who are struggling with health concerns and for their loved ones. We pray for students, teachers, and administrators and parents as they seek to navigate the uncharted waters of COVID-19 with grace, hope, justice, and love. We pray for foster families, adoptive families, birth families, and all who work to help nurture and heal children. We pray for Gary and Sharon Hassel as they care for Sharon's daughter, Michelle, who is recovering at home after suffering a stroke. For Gloria Kamenicki's cousin, Dawn Baumgartner, who is undergoing chemotherapy. And for Dar Saladino Blair and all who struggle with memory loss. Having offered our prayers of this day, let us join our voices with Christians across the world and across the centuries as we pray to you, our God, who is both our mother and our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. But lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God of all, we ask you to send your spirit of holiness to transform these simple gifts into your grace, which surpasses all fear and bears witness to your enduring love. Friends, the table is ready. So come not because you must, but because you may. Not because you know, but because you seek. Not because you are whole, but because you hunger. Come, for it is Christ who invites you. The cup of salvation. Drink deeply. Our prayer of thanksgiving is printed in the bulletin. Please join me. In these days of continuing uncertainty, we thank you for coming to us, Spirit of God, to breathe peace and life upon the gifts of the table and upon those who gather wherever they are. By grace, you take this simple bread which is broken to transform it into the life which makes us whole. You take this common cup and sanctify it with your peace so it quenches our thirst for hope. And then you breathe upon us so we may go to open the doors slammed shut by prejudice and injustice so all may be filled with hope all might have life breathed into them. All may live as one in body, mind, and soul. Thanks be to you, O oh God. Amen.
Friends, this worship may be ending, but our service is just beginning. Let us go forth, being agents of God's flourishing, sharing that good news of great joy with everyone we meet. Alleluia and Amen.